Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching us all over the state. And by the way, thanks for making us number one in the Harrisburg-Lancaster market on WGAL-TV in our time spot. Uh, we'll be back in a moment for a very exciting news journalist roundtable after these messages. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. Hi, welcome back to the program. Now, as often is the case, about once a month we try to bring in some of the state's leading journalists to chat about what's going on in the Capitol. That's the Capitol in Harrisburg, and I'll tell you, there's always something going on there that's fascinating. Joining me, as often is the case, is Tony Romeo from KYW and KDK Radio, John Mysick from the Allentown Morning Call, and Amy Worden from the Philadelphia Inquirer Journalists All. Well, ladies and gentlemen, one lady and two gentlemen, look, let's go. Uh, there are a whole bunch of topics out there that I think are uh, very much on the minds of Pennsylvanians. What else can we say about that disaster that took place, Tony Romeo, on the turnpike? On the turnpike and on I-78 near John's uh, hometown, his home newspapers hanging right by uh, uh, 78. But hearings in Harrisburg, everybody's investigating it. Give us a quick update, Tony. Where does all this stand? Well, I think there are going to be more hearings somewhere down the road, but I think that the big blow is over now. There were two hearings last week. Uh, there were, was one of the, ha the Senate and, uh, right. on Thursday and then one of the House on Friday. This would be the previous week, not this just week j just gone by. Um, first of all, let, let's be clear. The turnpike was actually clear, which is one of the issues that came up in the hearing. Well, I thought they were backed up because of that. Uh, well, there was an accident, but accident I don't think that was storm-related. Right. Storm not not storm-related. Well, one of the okay. issues that came up, though, in Good the hearing point. was, well, you know, why was the turnpike and the northeast extension, which went into some of these same areas, why was that able to be clear? Oh, and I these got interstates it. that I were affected. It. Okay. Now, uh, but, but it, yeah, yeah, obviously, uh, uh, you had two days of hearings, uh, the uh, senator one day and the uh, house and the other. Uh, and you had uh, the top heads of, of the emergency management agencies, Pima, State Police, uh, Penn Dot, State Police, and the, the National Guard was also there. I mean, what was the kind of the general demeanor? I mean, legislators didn't seem to be totally outraged by it. The questions, at least as you know, covered by on Pennsylvania Cable Network, and get, get, I mean, what is it that the legislators are really concerned about? Well, they're concerned about the same things. I think that the that the agency heads are concerned about, well, actually that the governor's concerned about, which is, you know, what, why were the roads not um, treated ahead of time? Right. How, did P how did PennDOT fall behind in its treating of the roads? And why in the whole scope of this emergency was there, a, a, as the governor said, total communications yeah. breakdown among the agencies that were supposed to be um, responding? Now, as I understand this, John, there was some, this huge delay of six or eight hours that took place between when Governor Rendell, who was supposedly watching a sports event, you know, at, at I don't know if the governor mansion or governor's mansion yeah. or his house, and no one told there, the governor. There, there what was, was this, that about? There's this incredible backstory that I learned from from some folks fairly high up in the administration that, in fact, the governor was at the executive residence down there on Front Street in Harrisburg, as has been stated, watching hoops on TV. Oh, it was basketball, it, not it, hockey. No, okay. was, um, I don't know if the governor follows hockey, but oh, I know okay. they follow basketball. <laughs> but, um, you know, what happens after hours is that calls to the governor's office roll over to members of the executive detail mm -hmm. in the mansion, the state police detail, who all of a sudden get start getting slammed with telephone calls about this god-awful mess on Interstate 78. And they have no idea, so they ask the governor, well, governor, what should we tell these people about what's going on in I-78? And he says, what is going on on I-78? It was just this incredible breakdown mm -hmm. where the guy at the top had absolutely no idea of, of the scope and the magnitude of this, of this, you know, what could have been disastrous. Hey. Let's, I mean, let's pause to note that nobody was hurt. Nobody was, nobody, no nobody, death, no, yeah. nobody died, yeah. but people were very cold and very hungry for a very, very long time. Tony, uh, is there any sense about these hearings that we're going to learn that there's remedies that they've been chatting about, or is it right now just trying to get at the root cause of it? Well, I think some of the senators at the end of the Senate hearing expressed uh, disappointment or frustration that there was a lot of talk about what happened, and they didn't hear a lot about what are we going to do to make sure this doesn't happen again. On the hearing before the House on Friday, one of the more interesting things that happened was the Republican chairman of the House Transportation Committee, the minority chairman Rick Geist, came out and said that he had evidence gleaned from documents 
uh, at the county level at right. PennDOT showing that, uh, that there had been a reduction in professional staffers, engineers, a uh, reduction in uh, IT technology professionals, diesel mechanics to work on vehicles, that they reduced their fleet of vehicles. And uh, at one point said that, uh, it, that there are people in PennDOT, there's evidence that there are people in PennDOT who are not equipped in terms of experience mm. to make decisions and that the legislature may have to step in. Mm -hmm. That was some of the strongest Go language ahead, I heard during the two days. Yeah, all of that denied by the PennDOT Secretary Alan Beeler. That Partially was, at the hearing, yes. Right, yeah. right, yeah. The, the, the other side of this is that the, this very fancy emergency management center at Pima that the, that the administration consistently brags about, about with satellite uplinks and telephone lines and radio lines going out all, all over everywhere, wasn't activated until, I think, four or five hours into this happening, which also led to this uh, breakdown in coordination. Nation. All right, we're going to go to a break. We're going to continue on this subject, but then we want to get to the very hot topic of the Legislative Reform Commission. It's finished the first part of its work. That and more after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Pennsylvania Medical Society, doctors and patients, preserve the relationship. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association, business in Pennsylvania is our business. I welcome back to the program. We're talking about the hap goings on in the Capitol, uh, in particular the hearings that were held in both the House and the Senate within the past week or so, dealing with this, this, this calamity that occurred on the interstates, uh, I-78, 80 and 81, do I got that all, we're all affected. That's right. All right, Amy Worden, I want to ask, to ask you to report, give us a little update on, the governor has said, go to the head of this, the, of FEMA, the former head of FEMA, a guy named Witt, James Witt, do an re internal report. What's, what's the latest on that? Right, right. Uh, two days after the Valentine's Day storm, uh, Rendell came out and said, and took full responsibility for, for what happened, you know, called it a disaster, break, major breakdown in communications, and announced he was hiring James Lee Witt, former FEMA director, right. to prepare a report, an investigation, basically do an investigation yeah. to determine uh, where everybody was, why no, when nobody was we communicating. We know what the, the governor right was doing, right? He was watching okay. a basketball well, game. Yeah, and all, all of all of his cabinet secretaries, and then uh, uh, and and then present recommendations. What can we do to make yeah. sure this doesn't happen again? Uh, now lawmakers are doing the same thing, basically, with legislation. Already, right. we're hearing bills coming out. There's one bill that would require trucks to have chains. Trucks were a major problem on I-78 because they kept jackknifing and they couldn't get them off the road. And another one to uh, revamp the emergency alert system so that people, you know, on the roads can have better communication. Anybody else on that? I mean, do you think that this, is like a lot of, of big incidents, are going to, is going to end up with a passel of legislation being passed? Likely, not likely? There will be legislation and probably one, at least one administrative casualty. Well, that's the other done. thing that, uh, you know, there was a lot of speculation about. In almost all of these disasters in which something doesn't go right, some head gets lop, lopped off, but there's no indication at this point whose head gets lopped off, right? That seems to be less Ed Rendell's style than that's perhaps true. Some Good, other that's an excellent governor. point. Go ahead. Uh, I, you know, I, it, I, it's hard for me to imagine an execution. Yeah. I think you may see some people moved out. Yeah. Uh, it may be more of an issue of uh, in a couple of months you may see. A resignation for somebody that, gets a job in the private sector. That's a sector. good point. We don't. We haven't seen that with Rendell, have we? You've been covering no, him for his entire no, tenure. No, he, he, well, he and he's legendary for not firing people. Yeah, I that's mean, right. he will he find has, he has he, a volcanic temper. Yeah but, yeah, but ultimately, he does not fire people. Yeah. He will reassign them. He will yeah. transfer them. But uh, well, I mean, you know, I, I guess. I mean, let, let me. Go, I want to get to this reform commission, but I'm going to just all ask you: do, do you think in the end there'll be remedial? efforts seriously made to make sure this doesn't happen again. What do you think? Yes or no? Yes, categorically. Yeah, yes. I think they have to, because that, that they, they would perceive, the public perceive, expects that. All right, Amy. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. All right, let's turn to the Legislative Reform Commission. A lot of talk in Harrisburg about the legislators changing the way they do business. The Speaker of the House, a couple of weeks ago, appointed a special uh, reform commission, bipartisan, They've now finished their first, whatever it is, four or five weeks of deliberations on what we could call the internal, the sausage-making part of the, uh, their activity. John Meisick, give us an update. Where, what has that commission essentially said and done? They've come up with 
32 separate, 30, 32 30. separate recommendations on, on changes to the way the House does business. The one that everyone seems to have attached themselves to is this, is this idea that the House won't do, won't do its business after 11 o'clock. Uh, the notorious pay raise with the well. Wind. Now wait a minute. Let me interrupt you. That'll make your life happier because you won't have to be there at two o'clock in the well, morning. That's, right? I mean, that's tr me. that's true, and it also sort of removes this taint for uh, public yeah. perception that they're there at two o'clock in the morning doing yeah. God knows what. Um, so I mean, that's sort of the one visible manifestation. There's just tons of other smaller reforms, including the not actually smaller, but the electronic posting of financial records on the web, which has been a which has been a huge, huge thing. So now that the public can see how their lawmakers and how the general assembly spending its money. And that was still the subject of considerable debate. I, you yes. know, watch that on. Go ahead. I just wanted to point out one thing about some of these procedural things, like no business after 11 o'clock. Remember, these folks have rules, but they can vote to suspend yeah. them at any time. And I'll be very interested to see when there's some sort of a crunch time over the budget or something, when it's 10.59 and they've got yeah. a deadline to do something. We'll see who can resist the temptation to they do step any? up and ask for well, a suspension. Well, 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 maybe it will help them allocate their time better <laughs> oh, yeah. instead of cramming everything into you know, June bar. 30th and beyond. They've raised the bar to suspend the rules. I think it's a yeah, three-quarter three vote now, on yeah. the 11 o'clock curfew. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a three-quarters. It used to be two-thirds. But still, uh, with a lot of these procedural things that they're changing to make for better government, they can... At any yeah. point, well, with, 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 with enough all... votes, suspend those okay, rules. Let's, 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 let's note that the, these are merely recommendations at this point. And, and by one, and, in the house. and into yeah. one chamber. And into yeah. one. Yeah, the, these are merely recommendations for the state house. What has to happen is these guys are coming back on March 12th when the house reconvenes, and they're going to put this bundle of recommendations to the full body. So there's still this open question of whether or not the full body. One would suspect because of the political press oh, that that, no, that they that they will adopt the, yeah. all of these rules changes, but all of them still need to be acted on the full house. Well, the House could actually govern itself, and the Senate could literally do business its own. Its own I mean, the, the Senate has already adopted yeah, a whole series of internal rules. Yeah, I understand, but they may not. They're not totally consistent with what the House is doing. Is there any reason why the House and the Senate have to have the same rules? No, no. No, but they obviously have to be on the same page when it comes to getting I, bills I, back they're, at they're, the they're, hour. But they're both trying to do the same thing, which is respond to public pressure to be more open, to be right. more accountable. Right. And, and you're all convinced there's a lot of goodwill in this. There's no reason for whatever not, the there's, reason. There's is. no reason not to think so. I mean, both yeah. Josh Shapiro, the Democrat from Montgomery County, right. and Dave Style, the Bucks, Republican from Bucks County, who have chaired this commission, have both seemed yeah. pretty earnest about what they want to get accomplished. All right. Here. When we come back, look, we're going to get into this business of the LCB and the Commonwealth Court have some differences over what the sale of beer in convenience stores. We'll take that subject up and more when we return. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Credit Union Association, Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money, and by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education, 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program for a journalist roundtable with Tony Romeo, Amy Warden, and, and John Meisick. Tony, I want to turn to you on this. Uh, we have this business where the LCB has said that, you, you're going to correct me on the facts, that Beer can, you know, uh, can be sold out of convenience stores that they can apply for licenses to do that. The Commonwealth Court has weighed in with a different opinion. Now, I know this is of big importance to people who want to go out to the convenience store and buy a, a six-pack of beer. Tell us why this is important. Well, it's important because you have seen the incursion of, of uh, food stores, grocery stores, convenience stores, into selling takeout beer. Right. The LCB position is that liquor law, as it's written, if these stores meet certain criteria, if they have in-store dining, for example, uh, they can sell takeout beer. And they have the other criteria they have to meet. It has to be a separate area. Okay. But what happened was, there's only a couple of licenses that have been issued so far. One is a Sheets convenience store in Altoona. Uh, the Commonwealth Court, late last week, Friday, I believe, ruled that, uh, that, they, that they could not sell takeout beer, the Sheets store, uh, because they did not allow for consumption of beer on the premises. 
But the LCB has said... The LCB is appealing that, and they are appealing it, according to their spokeswoman, yeah. because they don't like that requirement that you should have to sit down and drink yeah. beer in order to buy a six-pack for takeout. You're in an extraordinary position where the Commonwealth Court is, in effect, ordering people to drink and drive from a, from a, Sheets, ga from a Sheets gas station. <laughs> no, you absolutely must positively have your icy light in the Altoona shop and then get behind the wheel and get back onto the interstate. Oh, man. It's, 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 get it's, it. it's extraordinary. And, of course, we should never underestimate the importance of the relationship between Pennsylvanians and their beer. It's, yeah. it's well, point. well, let's go ahead. I just want to say, uh, uh, people should be aware that there's probably going to be legislation to address yeah. this. Um, so that's the problem, Amy. There's no specific legislation, or there's a conflict in between the LCB and the court about whether or not this can be done. The right. LCB reads it differently, right. apparently, than the Commonwealth Court. Right. Right. Uh, Bob, Bob Donatucci, who chairs the House Liquor Control Committee, said yesterday that he's already intending to hold hearings yeah. so they can get some a clearer idea of what's going on well, with the You guys, you're having too much fun with this. But I think the, the important thing to keep in mind is which direction are they going to go. Yeah. Uh, John Rafferty, who's the Senate chairman of the Law and Justice Committee, which that, that's the committee that has oversight of liquor issues there, he wants to shut it down. Uh, however, I think in the House, uh, both uh, the Democratic chairman of the Liquor Control Committee, Robert Donatucci, and the Republican yeah. chairman, Ron Raymond, have sort of indicated, well, it may be legislation that says if we're going to go forward, you know, we're going to have to do it you right. You know, it's sort of fascinating that over the years, conservatives in particular in the legislature would really oppose, you know, and fight. But you, you, you all think that this that legislation allowing this is likely to pass? I mean, does that make sense? I don't think it's clear. I think it could, you, it could go great? either way. No, I, yeah, no, it's unclear. It could either but be legislation to stop it or to clean it up. There's certainly suddenly um, a lot of uh, pressure now being being placed upon um, uh, the LCB and and the legislature by the major supermarket chains too. To they, open they want up. they want to in. open up. Yeah. It seems yeah. like we're entering this period where there's there's, there's definitely a reassessment going on. Yeah. of the way the state regulates the sale of alcohol and, and maybe edging toward, depending yeah. on what happens, maybe edging towards some modernization. Well, the there's system. always been that criticism of the LCB, you know, one of the few, what's, there's one other state, I think, that has this monopoly and that, particularly for beer, that it should be opened up more. Go ahead. I was going to say, it's sort of like perestroika once that door is open. Yeah. But, you know, and then you can't what, stop and it. Four or five years ago, stop. you had this effort to modernize yeah. the agency, and I think now right. there is a push, a push from the public to, to, to modernize and, you know. Mr. Mr. Conti, take down that wall. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Joe Conti, the new CEO, is also a former restaurateur and, and bar owner. Oh, in that so direction you think as well. he, oh, okay, so we could get, we, they're talking about a former state senator, Joe Conti, who now heads the LCB, and a pretty controversial move that Governor Rendell did was at the end of last year, the beginning of this year. All right, we're going to take a break. Uh, we're going to, let's check in, I'm going to check in with our, our journalists here and see how the governor's doing. He's appeared he's got a like a teflon shield that that surrounds him on all these important issues i noticed these are the folks that follow him around and try to find out what he's up to we'll take that up uh, the governor and how he stands with the public after these words this broadcast of pennsylvania newsmakers is presented by highmark blue shield changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Builders Association. Building today for a better tomorrow. And by the Pennsylvania Cyber Charter School bringing educational innovation and freedom to the children of Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program. We're talking about, you name, what have we talked about? The, the journalist friends here, we've talked about just about everything. Uh, okay, let's, let's turn to, to Governor Rendell. The Keystone Poll and in, in all, in all, you know, Truth in Lending here, which uh, I direct at Franklin and Marshall, this week came out with a poll. Uh, shows that the uh, Governor Rendell's approval rating is still pretty strong. It's held up compared to last year. It doesn't seem to have been affected by two things. The tax hikes that he <laughs> proposed in the budget and the disaster on the interstates. Amy, is, is that, does that come, you follow him? Does, what is there about this guy, Governor Rendell? That's, that's, uh, that's, is, a, that's a good is, question. Is it that, he's, that, he, that, he, that he can remake himself? He's pretty good job at that? Is it that he... I, what do you think? I, it, it's, it's, it, I think that's a hard question to answer, Terry. I mean, he, he seems, it just seems to be able to deflect uh, yeah, on, on right. criticism. I mean, there, yeah, there, there's criticism in the corners or whatever, but, but, but 
taking the full heat yeah. on, on any of very controversial proposals, raising taxes and, and then the snow disaster. I, I, think, I think at least in the case of the storm, um, you see a fundamental difference between what's happening in, in Washington and what's happening here. I don't think you can underestimate the power of saying, I screwed up and I'm sorry for that. You mean I, as compared to how as, they handle Katrina? As, right, as compared to Katrina yeah. where there was deflection and there was blame and there was evasion. Rendell, within 24 to 36 hours of everything going straight yeah. to hell, stood up and said, I'm sorry, we messed up, we take ownership of this, and we're going to find out what yeah. happens. Right. Saying sorry goes a long way with the eyes well, of the voters. No, you're I mean, right. If you're, if you're not trying to well, bury something, ahead. it does yeah. work. Sorry. Go ahead. I would just say that the man has, the man has tremendous political instincts. Um, and, 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 you know, over the decades, it's, it's amazing to me how politicians sometimes learn that the cover-up is worse than the mm -hmm. original mm -hmm. screw-up. It always is. Right. And, 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 and the governor seems to have this counterintuitive ability to, mm -hmm. to understand that the best thing to do is to come, come out, out yeah. and, and get it out there and, and yeah. take the heat. Yeah. Although, you know, although on the snow storm thing, um, you know, there was a, there was a considerable lag time between when, you know, when the disaster sort of struck and mm -hmm. everybody was trapped and... And Friday, well, that was Wednesday. Friday, yeah, when when he stepped forward in Thursday, forty eight hours. Yeah. Though, well, mm -hmm. but in Thursday, yeah. you know, some people have said, you know, where was the governor? Why wasn't he on sure, the scene? Sure. But when he finally uh, did speak, he didn't try to finesse it. But he came out a minute, let me, let's go back to another no. subject. He, in, in 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 the poll that we did, he produces. I mean, he talks about five new programs. Virtually every one of them requires a tax. Mm -hmm. Three of them draw pretty substantial support from the voters. So here's a governor who proposes this very ambitious agenda, there's taxes associated with it, and it gets caught in this storm problem, and, it, and it's like there's this Teflon shield. It, it, it treated with the same chemical that deflects snow and ice. Well, well, well whatever. It, was whatever. Not, it was not put down on the road. Exactly. Exactly. It was not put down on the road. I, I think it, it's a measure of his personal charisma. Yeah. And, and, then, and the guy's a tremendous salesman. He can make this stuff that's unpalatable yeah. to anybody else. we got else's one work. minute left. And then the legislature that's been beaten up by, you know, bonus gate and, you know, the staffers who've gotten these bonuses doesn't seem to be able to draw a break. Approval rating's still low. You know, I, again, I, I think that is an issue of uh, sort of like the momentum. It's, it's yeah. like a glacier that moves very slowly. Does this give, hold on, does this give, and I'll go around quickly, Rendell, some added advantage in dealing with the legislature? So many new people, uh, their approval rating's low, his, his is better. Does that give him some advantage going into this budget cycle? Too soon to tell, maybe, maybe a little bit. I think he thinks it does, yes, especially with his 20-point election win. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're, in, you're basically in agreement on this. All right, we'll see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania Newsmakers, and stay well.